Thanks very much indeed for coming. Um, we're delighted to have Senator Inhofe here to talk about infrastructure. Uh, when the tax bill was uh, grinding its way through and when Obama, the failure to uh, repeal and replace Obamacare was grinding its way through Congress, we always used to be asked what's coming next. And uh, what was coming next was infrastructure. And so now the future has arrived uh, in the form of the Senator Inhofe and the infrastructure bill, which was unveiled in the last several days. Um, it's an enormous bill, one and a half trillion dollars. It stretches from bridges to broadband, and it's rural and it's urban. There's distractions. You probably remember that infrastructure week last summer was uh, interrupted by Mr. Comey on Capitol Hill. And there's a lot of distractions from what is obviously an extremely important uh, piece of legislation. And uh, we're delighted to have Senator Inhofe here this morning to talk uh, about it with us. I want to thank our sponsors, the uh, Auto Care Association and GAIN, that's the uh, Grow America's Infrastructure Now, um, for making this possible, and also to thank Hillsdale, who has allowed us to uh, use the facility here. Um, I want to bring forward uh, Susan Fariccio, who's our Chief Capitol Hill correspondent, who's going to uh, hold a discussion with Senator Inhofe. Please give a warm welcome to Senator Inhofe. <laughs> Good morning. Should we tell them what's funny about this that we have you again this afternoon? <laughs> well, I'd say we get going on this interesting topic of infrastructure. Um, everybody on Capitol Hill has been dying to know uh, what's going to happen with infrastructure. We've been talking about it for years. Um, the Congress passed a transportation bill in 2015 and expires in 2020. But they've never tackled the problem of the Highway Trust Fund and the $16 billion annual deficit. Uh, and now here comes an infrastructure plan after all these years, $1.5 trillion proposed by the president. And uh, this is a really interesting plan because it, it, instead of having an 80-20 federal private spending idea or something along those lines, it's, it's kind of flipped on its head. It's $200 billion in federal spending, and the rest is to come through public-private partnerships, state and local uh, people putting up the funding. And people are questioning, how is this all going to happen? Um, and so I wanted to just at the outset get your initial thoughts on this sort of novel approach by the president and whether you think it's really feasible. Well, first of all, what I was referring to earlier, because I was I brought the no wrong notes with me because I'm talking to the examiner this afternoon, the same type of forum, except it's on, on, on military, it's on defense. Those are my two areas of, uh, of expertise, I guess you'd say. I've been the ranking member on the Senate Armed Services Committee for quite some time, and uh, we're undergoing that at the same time we're doing infrastructure. So you say a, a novel uh, idea. The, it is, but you have to understand a guy that, that I didn't understand at all, and his name is Donald Trump. Uh, Trump, it was, uh, I got a phone call October the 9th of not that, last year, but the year before. Now, wind your memory back a little bit. That's when Trump was our nominee, the Republican nominee for the, uh, for the presidency, but he hadn't run against Hillary yet. And so I didn't know anything about it. In fact, a confession is good for the soul. And when, when there were 17 Republicans running for president, he was number 17. You know, I didn't have any idea that he was going to make it. Uh, anyway, I got a phone call. This from Donald Trump. And he said, would you come to New York? I'd like to visit with you tomorrow. And I said, you know, I said yeah, I'm not doing anything. So, uh, yeah, I went to New York. And I was, there were 13 people in New York uh, uh, visiting with him around one table. And it, it was kind of interesting because each one was in an area of specialty. They had someone there on health care. They had someone there on, on uh, energy. I was there because of military. And so it, here was a Donald Trump that I'd never seen before on TV actually taking notes and asking questions in very subdued and quiet. So with that as a background, uh, I became impressed with him because when I looked at the 13 people around that table, I was thinking if I were a, a new president or running for president and was going to win, those are the same people I'd want around that table. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm a very conservative person. I don't even know who, uh, you know, what you are. You're probably, some of you are a bunch of liberals, I'm sure, because they're always in the audience. And, and 
Sometimes they're very noisy in the audience too. But uh, so we have this opportunity with uh, with a, a guy who, in his business career, learned a long time ago that this is what I have figured out for myself that he does one thing at a time. He wanted to do the health care thing, and that was done. He had the votes. I mean, he knew exactly what he was doing. However, there was one guy who happens to sit next to me on the floor of the Senate who voted no, and that was unexpected. So that loss by one vote, that will be coming around, I can assure you. Then he got into the tough, tough area, a lot tougher than infrastructure, and that is uh, on, the, on the tax uh, revisions. And that was a very diff a heavy, heavy lift, but he was able to get that through and get it done. So the next thing that he has, he was delayed a little bit by all this border stuff that's going on, but, uh, but he is now in, in, with both feet in this thing uh, to infrastructure. So I say that to just, my impression is, he decides what he's going to do, and then he goes ahead and does it, unlike a lot of people in politics. So we had a meeting yesterday. I, I, the, you, you were going to ask about that, I'm sure. Uh, oh, yes, I am. You guys all met at the White House, and uh, oftentimes we don't really get to know what happened and uh, what the conversations were about because the cameras only are occasionally allowed in. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know the basic ingredients because he's been talking about, and you used that in your introduction, uh, he's talking about, uh, yes, the hard uh, stuff is up front, $200 uh, billion. He has that broken down, 200 billion, 100 billion of that is going to be used for stimulus with the uh, various local and uh, state uh, agencies and individuals. So that those states that participate in it to a greater extent will be rewarded with more participation to encourage them to do what they should be doing anyway. Now, I've been around for a long time. In fact, I've been on every one of these uh, transportation reauthorizations re, um, since 1987, and I was in the House at that time. And so uh, we learned that we, this is something that, frankly, I'm pretty good at this. I don't do very many things well. I often say the only two things I do is ride horses and fly airplanes, and everything else uh, is like, uh, I'm not, I've got a lot of superiors in the other areas. But um, uh, when we look and see, those years that I chaired the Environment and Public Works Committee, some of you know that and some of you were participating in that, uh, my counterpart was Barbara Boxer. Now, if you name uh, all during the last 20 years, the three most liberal members of the United States Senate, Barbara Boxer would be among them. If you name the, the most conservative members, uh, I would be among them. So how could we get along and get things done? Well, we could because this is the one area you can do it. This is an area that everyone is for. In fact, without naming names, because I think you know who I'm talking about anyway, when we had a lot of, a few years ago, a lot of Republicans running for uh, President of the United States, and they're all trying to be more conservative than the other one, uh, and, and, and consequently, when they go back to their states, and people would jump on them and say, well, wait a minute, aren't you, you're, not, you're not supporting the, the transportation. Their response is always, oh, I wasn't talking about transportation. So they always draw that out, because that's the one thing that everybody wants. Everybody wants roads and highways. You have allies there. You know, I, I get very upset with some of, the, uh, uh, some of the Republicans that I serve with who are trying to establish conservative credentials. And, uh, and they, they start to get on the Senate floor and they talk about, well, we can't do this. I remember in uh, MAP 21, they said the same thing. We can't spend all that money and all that. But that's what we're supposed to be doing. You know, there's an old document nobody reads anymore. It's called the Constitution. It says we're supposed to be doing two things. First of all, defending America. And, uh, and then uh, they called them post roads at that time, but it's roads and highways. So we all uh, got together. The, the group that met yesterday with the president was uh, the chairman of the, just the chairman of the committees. I happen to chair the transportation committee. So the other, this is in the House, in the Senate, Democrats and Republicans. And there was really a lot of agreement. We normally don't get a group like that together and have them uh, agreeing. Well, what did the president, of course, had the 200 billion. He has this broken down, 50 billion is gonna be rural and just kind of broad outlines of it. Then he recognizes there's going to have to be a source of funding, and we talked about that. And there's a lot of discussion. Of course, my good friend, a Democrat, who is 
uh, I won't mention his name, I think you know who I'm talking about, he was just rejoicing because he's been wanting to increase tax, any kind of tax his whole career. And so he was rejoicing, thinking that we all get together and we're gonna increase the highway tax. Uh, well, this, you know, it may happen, it may not happen. It's not gonna happen the way he wants it to happen. But there are so many other ways, uh, funding ways. For example, uh, you're familiar with WIFIA. Uh, WIFI was put together so that we would actually use it for uh, drinking and wastewater, but he wants to expand that so it'll inclu include uh, ports. Now, you guys uh, probably are not aware that we are in Oklahoma the most uh, inland warm water port. We're a port. We're navigable in Oklahoma. Did you know that? Yeah. No, you didn't. No, not many people do know it, but we are. And so we have serious problems, and that's all a part of the city. It's not just roads and highways. The ports are very, very uh, important, an important part. So what he wants to do is to be able to get some of the uh, inland waterways along with deep water ports. I was not as interested in that, but we had a discussion uh, on the ports. So we would be using some of the WIPIA money that was not eligible before. Then we have something, and this is where I'll lose you, and this is where I lost some of the, uh, at least the Democrats around the table uh, yesterday morning, and that is and this was a novel, this, this was an idea. It really started with the Democrats. It was uh, uh, President John Kennedy uh, was back in 1962. He said, you know, we need more money for the Great Society programs. He said the best way to increase government revenues is to reduce marginal rates. And he reduced marginal rates. And four years later, the uh, amount of revenue that came in increased by 30%. Now, I know you're thinking, well, this isn't going to be any way to... It is. Uh, look what happened in 1981. In 1981, the total amount of money that was there to run uh, government was $469 billion. And that's when, uh, that's when Ronald Reagan uh, took the rate down from, um, from 90% to 70%, and then all the other rates went down accordingly. And that, that $469 billion changed uh, two years later to um, uh, $720 billion. I mean, that was the reason that it increased the revenue increase. Now, what's happened uh, so far? The, this president's been in office for a year, and if you go back and wind the clock back a year, and then look at the eight years prior to that, Barack Obama, and I say this, uh, I like the guy and all that, I just disagreed with everything he did. But what he, what uh, his idea at that time was to, was to uh, concentrate in areas, the social areas. In fact, uh, I thought I was going to be, I'll be talking to this group uh, about uh, defense uh, this afternoon. And uh, I'm always reminded that during his eight years, he had a policy. You can't put in more money into the, our defense system unless you put an equal amount of money in the social programs. Well, that's not what the Constitution says to do. And of course, that's not what this, this president is going to do. So we're, we're correcting these deficiencies. But if you look at it and just uh, look at it as to what history has shown us, uh, the average in the eight years that Obama was president of the United States, the average um, uh, increase in economic activities, GDP, was 1.5% for eight years. Now, what has it been since this guy's been in office? It's exceeded, it exceeded 3%. It's now anticipated, the Wall Street Journal said 4.5%. It's going to go up. Now, for each increase of 1%, that equates to uh, $2.9 trillion over a 10-year period. So just look at that. This has happened before. It's going to happen again. And that's going to be the main thing. They're going to be searching for different uh, opportunities for funding. But that's going to be the major uh, increase. And again, it's, it's, it's not a sellable thing. People uh, don't, can't get their arms around it. But every time in history that that's been done, we've had those results. I forgot what your question is. It was just about flipping the formula of private versus public oh. funding. And you know, yesterday, I think, and the day before on the Senate floor, um, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is already kind of laying down his marker on this formula with a giant poster board that said, Trump tolls, because in the view of the Democrats, any uh, formula that requires a lot of public funding is going to necessarily require some kind of 
gas tax or toll. And I wonder if you could talk about whether you think that should be, I mean, part of the infrastructure plan was to loosen the toll regulation so that maybe the interstates could have tolls. What do you think about that idea? And should that be part of the funding? It was part of the discussion yesterday uh, about all of the options that are out there for, for funding. And tolls, uh, you know, obviously are, are in the mix. And we talked about that. Now, there is a basic philosophical difference uh, on the floor of the United States Senate, and the same at the House, so I'm just more familiar with the Senate. And that is, Democrats don't believe anything is going to happen unless it comes from direct from public funding. They want the money, and they want all of them will say this. With I don't know an exception on the floor. Now, there are some exceptions. There are nine endangered species uh, in the uh, Democrat line, in the ones who are up for re-election there in cycle this year, and uh, so they're acting like Republicans. But in in terms of what they do and what they believe. They believe it's got to be money coming from the federal government, and that's uh, and so that's that's all they they talk about. That can come in the form of uh, of just direct. They don't even like tolls as well as they like this, the the direct funding. So it'd be a reprioritizing. Some of that will happen, but uh, again, we talked uh, uh, in in this meeting yesterday morning about an, any number of th ways in participating. Uh, and the incentives that could be there for the private sector to come in. But tolling is on the table, and it's one that is going to be considered as uh, one, of the, one of the options. And another- we Now, we didn't get into a lot of details on this. Everyone recognized that this is the toughest uh, question. But we uh, talked about what is it going to look like. Now, when you talk about tolls, uh, there are some things we can't use tolls on. On the inland waterway, you can't use tolls because that is something that there's no alternative. You can only use tolls when there's an alternative. There's no alternative uh, there. Right. So they don't work across the right. board, but that will be, uh, certainly it's on the table and it will be a consideration. Interestingly, there were reports yesterday about the president endorsing uh, the gas tax. And I'll tell you on Capitol Hill from talking to a lot of lawmakers over the years, what I sense now is that there's more, um, people are warming up to the gas tax a few years ago. Uh, you couldn't really get many Republicans behind the idea, but I, I hear a lot of Republicans saying, look, we need to at least consider that. Is momentum building for the, you know, the so-called user fee, and what did the president say about that? I know the comments that were made after that meeting, and I know who made them, and there was, I have to say, a lot of wishful thinking in those comments. <laughs> because uh, uh, the individual who was leading that thought is one that's always talked about for as long as I can remember is uh, we have, and there's a lot of truth to that. I was around back, we know what one of the biggest problems was uh, back in the, in the 80s and, and 90s? There was too much money in the Highway Trust Fund. And so you remember uh, when Bill Clinton came in and he took uh, $12 billion out of that and it took me three years to get the $12 billion back into the Highway Trust Fund. Uh, and, but then we saw what happened, we, uh, the concentration on uh, cars that are, you know, that are driving on, but don't use gas. And by the way, that, all right, that was discussed too. And I discussed right, that. Right. Because why should they have a free ride? You know, yeah. Yeah, and besides that, this is uh, America, and in America we have choices that we can make, and the market is dictating those choices. And uh, we want the market to know that, uh, that in America we're gonna drive the kind of cars we wanna drive. And, uh, and, and they can do just so much. Who was it I talked to coming in that was uh, there at the big auto show uh, last, well, you're in here somewhere. Um, that, that took place just uh, what, two weeks ago, I guess it was. This whole idea in autonomous vehicles, I was commenting to them since my background is in, in uh, aviation. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, you can't, you know, it's not believable that we can have autonomous uh, vehicles out there. And I have to remind them that we are actually doing that now in the air. I mean, we, we've been doing that for a long period of time. That's not part of the subject here, but it's part of transportation. Uh, so, yes, that, uh, yeah, that was a lot of wishful thinking in that. And when the president says, yes, everything is on the table, and uh, that would include uh, increasing the gas tax, he didn't say it in those words, but everything is on the table, then the interpretation that this person had was, ah, the president now wants to have a, uh, wants to have a, a gas tax increase. That, that's so, what uh, I figured. <laughs> I figured yeah, it was, that's, it was that's a little more general than, than what was being reported. Well, Tom, Tom wants to say it his way. So, um, a lot of the criticism, last time we had a big 
bundle of money that was supposed to go toward infrastructure was the stimulus plan, um, more than $800 billion. All right, let's, let's go back there. That's very, in fact, I brought that up yesterday in the meeting. Can you folks remember nine years ago, the first thing that uh, uh, President Obama, when he first became president, did? He said, I've got to have $800 billion because we want to have, we want to have uh, transportation, we want to be, have a stimulus, and to do it, we've got to bite the bullet and get the money in there. So he didn't get $800 billion, he got $836 billion. Now, what did he do with the 836? Does anyone here want to venture a guess as to how much of that $836 billion went to stimulus and went to transportation? 5%. 5%, that's all. So he, that was a very clever way that he was able to get all of that money in, and most of that went to his, his environmental agenda, and he was uh, very smart the way he figured that out. Well, that's not going to be what you get now. Uh, anything that comes in, and that also puts it in the realm of people who say, well, you can't come up with that much money. Well, we did nine years ago. We could do it again. And this time, we do it right, and this time, I can assure you, I can look all of you in the eyes and say, it's going to go into transportation, it's going to go into infrastructure. Part of the issue, too, with um, the stimulus and the problems were the so-called shovel-ready jobs, uh, and that there, they were, there weren't any, um, and there were delays in getting the work done. And so I think, you know, people have a lot of interest in the president's infrastructure provisions that deal with reforming the permitting process. Um, some, Repub some Democrats are worried about that. They're worried about, uh, you know, okay, protection. That, what do you think of those changes, and how can that yeah, impact? Th that, that's a fair observation mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, the NEPA requirements and all of these things that are out there, the environmental uh, requirements that we're operating under. But let's keep in mind, we demonstrated <clears throat> very clearly with uh, Barbara Boxer and me that that we could still do these things. The thing, the streamlining that we did uh, right now, we're going to, we, with the new legislation or however we get into this, the streamlining that we started, all of that's still intact. That's going to continue. And now that's, that's something that, what didn't come up yesterday, but it has in meetings we've had with the White House before, we set the stage for that, uh, different things. I remember they had the, I think it was 1% for art, and uh, you had to do that. Well, one of the requirements, one of the things, on my side that I wanted to get done. I said, that's fine, 1% for art, but let's, let, let's change that, modify that a little bit and say 1% is going to go out there and if they want to use it for art, that's fine, but if they want to use it for unfunded mandates, uh, they can use it for that. And so that is now a part of the law and that's has, that has uh, been successful. On the streamlining, and uh, it, it doesn't mean, when he talks about the uh, knocking the 10 years down to two years, sure that could be done. You know, this is government. Anything that can be done in 10 years can be done in two years. It's if they just go ahead and do it. But that, it's the nature of the bureaucracy to try to make things last longer because that way they can hire more people and they can grow. So it's uh, uh, those things that we have done, uh, allowing us to not take shortcuts on the environment but doing the same thing, but getting it done faster, setting goals out, and that's going to make a big difference. Uh, each uh, 3%, uh, we, we, we've actually measured this in terms of knocking that 10 years down to two years on how much more money you're going to have to, uh, to be able to spend on uh, getting roads, highways, and infrastructure actually built by uh, using these... Uh, uh, the shortcuts that they agreed with. And keep in mind that if you look at the Environment Public Works Committee, now I'm not chairman, but I was already chairman for the, the maximum time that you can be chairman, so now I'm chairman of the subcommittee on transportation doing essentially the same thing, but also on the Commerce Committee. The jurisdiction of what we're talking about is divided equally between two committees, Environment Public Works and the Commerce Committee. And so uh, we're, uh, you know, still in, involved in, uh, in that uh, from both committees. Right. But on the Environment and Public Works Committee during the years that I was chairman, we had the, the very most liberal Democrats on that committee and the very most extreme conservative Republicans on that committee. And we got together. When they kind of looked at Barbara Boxer and me and said, anything the two of them agree on, we got to look at pretty carefully. Yeah. And now the people I've talked to more than the Republicans on the committee are uh, 
Senator Whitehouse, Senator uh, uh, Cory Booker, uh, uh, Markey, you know, the far extreme left. And we sit on the floor of the Senate and actually talk about what we want to get done in, this, uh, in the legislation. So it's, it's one of the few things that uh, we can bring everyone together on. And we, we've demonstrated we can do it. Again, that was part of the discussion. And I reminded them yesterday that we had, uh, we've been able to do things that other, uh, on, on transportation issues mm -hmm, we couldn't right. do anyplace else. Well, that's true. You pass a lot of bills together. Uh, well, we did not person. just the FAST Act. We did mm -hmm. the chemical bill. We did the water bill. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. I used to say they had, um, Mitch McConnell has a meeting at uh, noon on every Wednesday, and we get together and they call in the chairman of the committees, and when it got, gets around to me, I say, now from the committee that actually gets things done, <laughs> and we do. So Democrats are worried, though, that this, there are various provisions in the infrastructure plan that could hurt safeguards, like the Buy America Act, which is sort of this obscure 1933 law. How is that something that concerns you about making sure that, that the materials come from the United States? Um, they're, they're citing that as one of their major concerns with the infrastructure proposal. It's interesting that they cite that as a major thing when that never even came up <laughs> yesterday. And, uh, and I think people are getting beyond that and saying, what, what's the most bang we can get for the buck? And, uh, and so it sounds good on the stump. But uh, you know we've got we've got building to do. What about the part of the infrastructure plan that addresses broadband? This is something totally new to the whole infrastructure process because you, normally we're talking about roads and bridges and things and not yeah. you know broadband. Um, there's 50 billion dollars in infrastructure grants available with fewer limitations for rural areas, which has some people worried. Well, you know instead of repairing a crumbling bridge, they're going to put in more broadband so there aren't safeguards in place to make sure the money's being spent on, on priorities. Um, what do you think about that infrastructure, I mean, the broadband part of this debate and how it impacts these rural areas that really are... Well, I'm from a rural state, right. Oklahoma, and uh, when I... This is an area I don't... Everyone in this room knows more about this than I do. In fact, uh, when I get a new instrument for one of my airplanes, I have one of my grandkids read the instruction and explain it to me. So uh, that's kind of where we are on that. But I do know that there's a great concern over broadband availability in rural areas. Now, it's, I don't think we're married to a particular amount. I just want to, I want to get it done. We don't have, we don't really know right now. It's kind of like when he talks about uh, breaking down his $200 billion. He has the $100 billion of that going to incentives for states. He has 50 of that going to rural areas. Well, part of that 50 would actually be in, in broadband in rural areas. So we can't really be as specific as we would like to be as to how much is going to go to, uh, to each area. Mm -hmm. Another part of uh, Trump's wishes on infrastructure uh, has to do with aviation. And I know this is probably something of great interest to you. He's been a longtime proponent now of privatizing the air traffic control. It's not going to happen. You don't support it and you don't think it'll happen? I know it won't happen. Do you all know this issue? Privatizing the air traffic control? <laughs> you know, it's something that is uh, the brainchild of, uh, of a good friend of mine over in the, uh, who's retiring from the house, uh, Bill Schuster. And that's his one thing he would like to get done, the feather he wants in his cap, and it's to privatize air traffic control. Well, I've been flying with the air traffic controllers now for uh, over 60 years. And, uh, and it's one of these things that it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, it's working very well right now. And the privatizing is a good idea. But it's not going to work in areas where you have an asset that has to belong to the, everyone in this room, has to belong to, um, uh, to the public. And I'm talking about airspace. And uh, they, they, I remember a meeting in the White House the very first week they came in. And that's one of the things that the president wanted to do. You know, privatizing sounds good. Everyone's for privatizing and all that. And in some areas, it, doesn't, it won't work. In this area, it won't work. And uh, they tried to tried to get it done. They can't even get the votes to get that out, out of the house. And they had the whole house was supposedly on uh, on board with this thing. They like as of today, they like 15 votes of getting out of the house. And then when 
you know, we didn't, we, when we did the reauthorization of the FAA in the Commerce Committee, uh, the chairman of that is John Thune, uh, we just discussed it briefly and we didn't even vote on it because there weren't any votes in there to pass it. So it's another of the, the wishful thinking things that isn't gonna happen, so. Well, what do you make of the delays in, in uh, modernizing the air traffic control system? Because certainly there's some- See, I don't buy that. They, in, in fact, they, they, he, they use this $39 billion a year. I, I, I wanna see what they're talking about because I don't know what they're talking about. But I do know air traffic control and I have worked with those guys. I've flown, you know, when you fly a lifetime, and you fly on instruments, and you fly with your life in somebody's hands with a bureaucrat on the ground. You know, that's, at first it's frightening, but it's a different group of people. And uh, they're used to that, and it's that human element that we don't want to lose. Now, if you, if you do privatize, they're going to have a committee. The committee's going to be, uh, they'll have organized labor, they have the airlines, they have everybody on this committee. But it's not going to be one where we have any authority from the people who are making the decisions out there. And that's us in the House and the Senate. So that's why I say I didn't mean to dwell on that, but it's not going to happen. But do you see any need to make reforms to speed well, up modernization? Are, and what are some of those? Like, what's happening with trying to get them onto the, the new system, um, the new modern system of tracking airplanes instead of those little paper tickets that they're... <laughs> that the, that the, the advocates of privatization, they like to hold up the paper tickets and say, this is what's happening in the, air, in the yeah, control it, towers. It sounds good. I, I had an occasion to fly an airplane around the world a short while ago. Uh, I was emulating the flight of Wiley Post. Uh, we have two heroes in Oklahoma, Will Rogers and Wiley Post. And Wiley Post is the one-eyed pilot. And, uh, and so I was tracking his. So I was in all these countries just uh, w with their air traffic controllers. You know, I've been there, I've dealt with them, and that no one can touch the way the, that we're doing it here. Now, they talk about this marvelous uh, Canadian system, and uh, that's what you're thinking about right now, because you've been listening to these guys. L listen to me. I have today. no choice. I have to listen. Uh, yes, to I, know. I don't. <laughs> 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 so you're saying that no need to really get going on the modernization, no need for extra money. Oh, no, it's modernized. It. We modernize okay. uh, all the time. Uh, we have systems, and I had, a, I wish they were longer, I'll tell you a story that happened down on the Mexican border with me, that, that uh, you know, our system is working very well. What do you think of the, the entry into the whole uh, of drones and the need to regulate drones, and how do you feel Congress has, has exerted its authority on that, and does there need to be more or less control of people who use drones? I think it's about right right now, and it's one, the, the drones are, uh, one thing you, you can't lose sight of, and that is everybody's got drones. I mean, the enemy's got, they have drones. They, uh, we saw what happened last weekend. Right. A drone uh, knocked down an F-16, I guess it was. Um, and so they're out there, and they're, they're for real. And so we, we, we want to stay ahead of the crowd on that. We want to be able to uh, use them. We can use them in combat. We can use them, uh, and every time they, they come up with something that doesn't work as well, it, to give you an example, uh, on pipelines, uh, how much easier it is to fly pipelines with drones than it would be with, uh, with manned aircraft. Yeah. And so I put an amendment on there that is now so that we can outline a number of places where they can use drones beyond the limits that are legally acceptable right now. So that's a changing thing every day. Drones are here. Uh, drones are are real and we're gonna stay ahead of the pack. A lot of private citizens have drones and they just use them recreationally and um, I know they're commercially, there's talk of having your pizza delivered by a drone, your Amazon order. Well, I keep by hearing things like that and I, uh, that's, that'll probably happen. And should there be regulations though? And well, there are regulations. safety that they're not, you know. Yeah, the fresh. committee that is in charge of those regulations is the Commerce Committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have, uh, right now, uh, we have a subcommittee working just on that. We've had, I think, four hearings already right. uh, this, this past year on uh, regulation of drones. And, and it, that, that, that's a work in progress. It's new enough. It's kind of like the, uh, the broadband you're talking about. Right. You, you get into something that's new, it's, it's going to be a work in progress for a long time. Uh -huh. um, quickly back to infrastructure. Just... Now that we're on the topic of money, um, the big problem with 
infrastructure has always been the, the highway trust fund and it's underfunded. There have been various proposals to try to keep it permanently funded. Um, none have gained enough traction. Is there anything you support uh, and that would that would keep funding at the right level in the highway trust fund so we're not always talking about this deficit? Sure. Well, as I mentioned a minute ago, it used to be the problem was too much surplus in the highway trust fund. Right. We should have indexed it at that time, but we didn't see a need to index it because there wasn't a problem at that time. We weren't forward-looking enough, and it never occurred to me. But I think we should uh, we should do that. And I think a lot of people who have not been supporters of increasing a tax, uh, that particular tax, are supportive of uh, indexing it. So now we're getting into the part where the president has give, given us his infrastructure plan and what happens next? People want to know, is there going to be legislation? What happens with your committee? Could you lay out the process for how Congress will try to take on this infrastructure Okay, plan? we were talking about that yesterday morning in the White House and the, I can, um, one of the things, when you're having a meeting with the press is not there, sometimes there is an assumed uh, confidentiality but never about what you personally say. So my appeal to them was, we've got something that works. We've demonstrated while nothing else was working, uh, our infrastructure is working, not just MAP 21 and, and the FAST Act, but uh, uh, it's, it's been working for a long period of time because when we opened up this uh, conversation, we talked about transportation is different from all other expenditures of government because it's popular. Everybody wants it, and, uh, and that's why... Um, that's why it's, it's uh, different and, and why we're going to be able to successfully uh, get it done. But my appeal yesterday was, let's, let's don't be looking for new ways to do things we already know how to do. Because we did in these, some people I recognize in this room were there bleeding with us during the, during the all during the FAST Act and some of the other uh, defense authorizations. And, um, and we now have, you know, some good things. I mentioned some of the... Uh, uh, the Republicans that are trying to uh, uh, get their conservative credentials from uh, from uh, transportation bills, they won't. They're not doing that anymore because they realize that that's 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 not the popular thing to do. Do you think that some uh, the Senate can produce legislation this year? Will you wait for the House? How will this work? Okay, what I think is going to happen, and uh, I mentioned that, and they the, there are nods of approval from the president mm -hmm. that yeah, we know that this is one of the things that has worked before. You've been able to do it. You've been able to uh, make adjustments in streamlining things that you wouldn't be able to make otherwise because it's necessary in order to get the stuff done to have a transportation bill. Right. And we use the same argument on the water bill, too, which is a part of this. Uh, so I, I would say that we are going to go ahead, and we are doing it now. We're putting together the framework, uh, from, and that's what the conversation was about uh, yesterday morning. Uh, because we had all of the chairmen of all of the committees in one room with the president and talking about what we're going to do. Now, it's natural, I think, for the president to want to take a leadership role. He's entitled to do that. He's a president who will be running again for re-election, and this is going to be a popular thing. And I, for that reason, I think we're going to, we're, it's going to move pretty fast. I've already said that that's his style anyway. You start on one thing and you see it through, you get it done, and then you start on something else. Well, we're through with taxation, now we're, we're going to do it with, uh, with transportation. So uh, we will draft legislation in the House and the Senate. And if you remember last time, it was not the House as much as the Senate. We had the Senate bill, right. and then we went over to the House, and it was fairly easy to pass in the House. Right. And I can remember on Map 21, uh, we had all of these uh, uh, re conservative Republicans opposing it on the floor, and I, you know, I, I can I can say things others can't say because I've always been. Uh, anytime they mention the three most conservative members, I'm always among the th three. So with that, I can talk about. I can criticize some of my friends who are using that to establish conservative credentials, which is exactly what they're trying to do in Map 21. So we passed the House, or the Senate. And I went over to the House and I met at my request with all of the Republicans in the House committee. That's MAP 21. And uh, it, all of them, just during that meeting, that was the day after we passed it in the Senate, and they all agreed it, to support it. 
uh, in the House. So I'm saying that because we kind of were established there in that leadership position, and we will do it again at the same time, this time, working with the, uh, uh, with the White House. In, in fact, a lot, of the, a lot of the guys in the White House now are people I've known since the Reagan mm -hmm. days, and so uh, we know each other. So I think it's going to be done, but, but it's going to be over uh, seen by, by the White House, and I think that's the way it should be. Have you been working at all with the House on this so that you can have a similar framework yeah, ready? Yeah, we, we will, and we, and we have. We have been already. I mentioned that in, our, in the committee, the Transportation Committee that I chair, we've already had four meetings, and uh, our, we've moved along pretty good. What about concerns by um, environmentalists to make sure that there are provisions in this bill that address, you know, the green energy um, and fossil fuel concerns? I know you've been, um, you've taken a, a pretty hard line stance on this, and I'm, I'm sure you're probably ready for that coming from the Democratic side. Um, what do you anticipate? Well, first of all, just to clarify that, because I have said, and, and I've got speeches I've made on the floor about the, uh, the you know, climate changes. It's always changed. All evidence is there. I mean, natural evidence, scriptural evidence, it's, it's always changing, and it's always going to be changing. Well, we anticipate that's the case, but to make a religion out of it and to have that governing everything that you do and the costs going up to, uh, to try to, uh, to satisfy uh, some uh, ideals that have nothing to do, in this case, with transportation, I don't think it's a good idea. Money's going to be too hard to come uh, to come by. But I'm not worried about it because if Barbara Boxer, every one of these things, uh, she, she agreed with. And uh, with her leadership at that time, we were able to go, and I mentioned today as we speak, the, I mentioned the three most liberal members. They're very good friends of mine. We sit on the floor and we talk about this. They're all exercise. They are not that concerned. You, I guess you'd be better off getting that from them than getting it from me. Mm. But uh, we, we did the things that were logically uh, wise to do and made an exception because this is transportation we're talking about, and there wasn't a dissenting vote among them out of committee. What do you think the hardest challenge will be then for working with Democrats to get a bill like this done? Well, I think uh, one thing you want to stay on course, uh, if you, you're talking about several different things. If you're talking about just roads and highways and bridges, uh, that's, that's going to be fairly easy because we know the obstacles that are out there, but we've have overcome mm -hmm. those obstacles recently. And so there's now a precedent that is set. Now, you get in some of the other areas on inland waterways and, and those, that's, that's new territory. That wasn't covered in the, uh, in the legislation where we were successful. So, but, you know, if we can do it, if it's all wrapped up in one package, they want the package. And, and I'm talking about the ones who are of a totally different philosophy than I, than I have. Well, they're questioning right now the $200 billion that the president's putting forward is, is going to involve cuts elsewhere to funding that addresses the same problems. Their argument is that we're taking funding from one place and moving it to another. Um, will that have to change, do you think? Will it... Will it Will you have to find another way to come up with this $200 billion, or will it have to become deficit spending? Okay, well, if we could come up with $836 billion for Barack Obama, who ended up not spending it mm -hmm. the way he said he's going to spend it, that $200 billion is not going to present much of a problem. I'll get off topic just for, for a little bit. But today there's going to be a big uh, immigration debate, debate and vote in the House. I see you put a few amendments out last night. Uh, what, what do you think the state of play is of what's going to pass in your mind uh, out of this group of amendments that are coming to the floor today? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe tell us a little bit about the amendments that you've put forward. Well, today is, uh, tomorrow a recess starts. One thing, uh, so if you're looking for something to happen today as they had designed to have it happen, uh, then you're wasting a lot of time because it's not going to happen today. Uh, there will be some amendments. Uh, we have... I will say this about uh, our uh, leader, Mitch McConnell, has been very honest and straightforward. He's been saying for two weeks now to Democrats, get your amendments, put them on, all of them will get a hearing. No, I'm not going to reject anybody. Just come, and what's happened? Nothing. They haven't put anything out until last night. And, uh, and so I think that'll happen, and when we get back from the recess, we'll, we'll continue that debate and uh, get it done. Now, keep in mind, we're on deadlines right now. But... Uh, 
I can't imagine that anything. Uh, well, again, uh, I'm out of my school here. I don't know. Uh, uh, right now, I'm sure that uh, Schumer and, and Mitch mm -hmm. are talking, mm -hmm. right. and I'm here. So right. I don't know is my answer. Is there, are there any of this, the proposals, something you can get behind? Oh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think when he came out and he was talking about the path to citizenship, uh, I didn't agree with that. And the, and the reason, and I've been very straightforward about this, I've been really blessed in, in having the opportunity to be the speaker at naturalization ceremonies for a long period of time. And you look out there and you see these people who have, they've learned your history, they've learned uh, your language. Uh, they are, you know, they're more knowledgeable in history than a lot of us probably in this room. And they've done it the hard way. And I'm just not about to put a bunch of people in front of them. And so that will govern how I vote in the ultimate product that comes out. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, sir. It was very informative, and uh, I learned a lot. I hope everybody else did, too. Well, thank you. For thank the you very much, sir. And I'll see you on military this afternoon. Sounds great. Right. Thanks. <laughs>